Welcome to this course on dealing with materials data. We are going to look at the collection, analysis and interpretation of materials data. We have already done one module on introduction to R and we are learning now how to use R to do descriptive statistics. And in this we are going to look at how to present experimental results and we have already seen how to present experimental results taking the conductivity of uh, ETP copper as an example. So there were 20 measurements and uh, we presented those measurements in many different ways and we have also found uh, th those are rank based reports like histograms and uh, dot charts and, and things like that. And then we also made the summary of uh, the data. Uh, we have also prepared summary based reports like mean and uh, standard deviation and variance and, uh, uh, and, and, and quantities like that, quantiles and quantities like that. So in this uh, session we are going to look at uh, another uh, very common data that you would see in uh, material science and engineering uh, which has a slightly different character compared to the previous uh, uh, data that we looked at namely the conductivity of uh, ATP copper. So let us take a look at that and uh, when we looked at copper conductivity data there were about 20 measurements and each was slightly different due to errors and inaccuracies. And the data itself was a normal distribution and the mean was the, uh, the value that we reported as the conductivity and standard deviation uh, said how much spread is there about this mean in the data. When you do experiments, if you repeat the experiments, uh, what are the values and how much uh, uh, away are they from the mean. So this, these are the two quantities uh, that completely describe the data. So we reported the conductivity itself as mean 101.3 plus or minus standard deviation. It was either 0.1 or 0.1 percent. In this case uh, both the relative error and absolute error happen to be same numerically, uh, but you can report it in either ways. However, sometimes a single measurement leads to a distribution of uh, um, values. A grain size is an example. So we will look at what is a grain and how do we determine grain size. So that is what we will look at uh, now. This shows the example of polycrystalline copper and the colors represent different grains. So this is basically the grain structure in polycrystalline copper. This is the same electrolytic tough pitch copper on which the conductivity measurements have been made by Dr. Harshwardhana. This is actually taken from his thesis and there is a color uh, triangle here and this triangle tells you that if you see a grain which is colored red for example, that means that perpendicular to the plane of this screen, this grain has 001 family of planes, the normal is 001. Similarly, if you see any blue colored grain, that means that that grain is oriented in such a way that the in the plane of this screen perpendicular to that is the normal of 111. So this is basically 111 plane and the normal is the normal to the plane and so that is what is colored as blue. So near about these then the colors slightly change. So anything that is bluish basically means that the normal uh, perpendicular to the plane of this figure uh, is given by that uh, family of uh, planes. And so this represents the grain structure and this is uh, for 101 family we use the green. So it is you can see that it is mostly blue and uh, some red and, and some uh, green yellow and things like that. So this is the uh, grain structure. Now in order to say what is the size of grains in a material, so you can see this is one single uh, measurement, it is one single micrograph and it gives you the grain uh, shape, size and distribution. And if you look at uh, the different grains, they all have different sizes. For example, there are some intermediate sized ones, uh, there are big ones and there are very small ones. For example, this is very small. So you can see that there is a variety of grain sizes that are coming out of one single measurement. And this is very, very common. So most of the materials are polycrystalline, uh, metallic materials and alloys are polycrystalline and one typically measures the grain size. And as you can see, it is not sufficient to give a number and a standard deviation as in the case of conductivity. 
because in the case of conductivity most of the values were lying uh, slightly away from the mean and that deviation was because of uh, random errors or uncertainties in our measurement. But that is not the case here, the grain size itself is distributed and so we need to give this information. So sometimes just giving the mean and standard deviation might not be sufficient or might not represent the true nature of what you are measuring or observing. So there is this concept called ASTM grain size and it is basically a number indicating what is the uh, grain size in a material and it is defined as follows. So you take the microstructure under 100 uh, magnif magnification and in that 100 times magnification microstructure you take 1 square inch count the number of grains and the ASTM grain number is n if there are 2 to the power n minus 1 grains in that square inch. So we basically take a micrograph and uh, we make sure that the magnification is 100 x and then we take 1 square inch of that and count the number of grains and uh, based on that then we give a number and this is called ASTM grain number uh, for that uh, microstructure or for that material. And this is described uh, in detail in Raghavan's uh, book on material science and engineering for example. So, um, so we have this grain structure and we have the uh, grain size measured by the ASTM grain number. And uh, I am going to show two data sets, both data sets give grain sizes uh, in some steels and these are two different samples of steels. And this data is generated by Mr. S. Purnachandra who is a PhD student uh, at IIT Bombay and uh, he has given me this uh, data set and uh, the first set uh, has grain IDs and grain sizes. I will show you the data set itself, uh, we will open it in uh, LibreOffice and see. And the second set is slightly more involved because uh, the second set is for a steel which consists of two phases. So in addition to grain ID, you also have a phase ID. Uh, so it will either say that this is grain of phase 1 or grain of phase 2 and then it will give the size of that grain. Okay? That is because the microstructure consists of two phases. On the uh, other hand, if you look at copper for example, it is a single phase, everything is copper and then we are getting the grain uh, sizes. But sometimes it can happen that there is one, more than one phase and this is true for most of the uh, alloys that are used in engineering application, uh, hardly any of them are single phase materials. So they will always have more than one phase and uh, the second set is uh, given uh, to, to deal with such scenarios. So you have in addition to grain IDs and grain sizes also the phase IDs. These data files are very big as you will see. It is uh, no longer practical to enter these numbers by hand. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, these are data files that are generated from the computer. So you can save them in the CSV format, uh, which is what Mr. Purnachandra has done and uh, given the data files uh, to us uh, for our study. And we are going to load this uh, CSV data file and we are going to uh, do the analysis on that. So the two data sets, one is called grain size data set 1 and the other one is called grain size data set 2.csv. So as you might have noticed, we want to give names as much as possible uh, which are intuitive and easy to understand and uh, clear to follow. So we are going to open these uh, files in LibreOffice and inspect, so let us do that. Um, so let me go to the data and uh, let us open grain size uh, data set 1 dot uh, csv and so there is uh, uh, this column integer identifying grain like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And these are the number of measurement points in the grain and the area of grain in square microns is given. So this is also a measure of the grain size, you can give the area of the grain in, uh, um, in square microns and uh, then you can also give um, let us go here, uh, the diameter of the grain in microns, obviously as you have seen the grains are not uh, circular or uh, spherical, uh, but you can get the equivalent circle of this area 
what is going to be the diameter of uh, such a circle. So, it is possible to give uh, an equivalent diameter for grains that is one way of defining an equivalent diameter, but that need not be the only way. Uh, but uh, this is again another measure, uh, this is this is an area measure, this is a length measure, right. So, we also have the ASTM grain size which is like a number. So, you can also give a number measure. So, there are three different measures of uh, grain sizes that we see here and uh, one is the area measure, the other one is some length measure, the other one is a number. And uh, for our analysis, uh, we are going to use the uh, ASTM grain size uh, with the integer identifying grain. So, this is one single data set and it already gives you large number of uh, grain sizes and so we are interested in looking at the distribution. So, the data itself is uh, distribution. Now, if you look at the second data set, uh, it is very similar to the first one except that now there is an extra column which is called face identity, right. So, it again after giving the face identity then it gives integer which identifies the grain and the number of measurement points in the grain and area of the grain and diameter of the grain and the ASTM number. Um, by the way, the number of measurement points in the grain uh, should also be proportional to the size of the grain because if you are taking uh, measurements at uh, um, periodic distances, then if you have larger area, you will have more measurements. So, this is also at some level another measure of the uh, size of the grain. But as you can see, these data files are too big, right. So, for example, the grain size 2, if you go down uh, and you can see somewhere of the order of 3600 data points are there. And similarly, the first uh, data set that we had the grain size 1, uh, it is not that big, uh, but it is still uh, reasonably big. And so, I think this has about uh, 480 or 500 uh, data points, right. So, so we have about 486 data points. So, obviously, Generating such a data file by putting data by hand into R is not practical and it is also not meaningful because uh, manual entry can introduce its own errors. So, this data comes from the computer and it is stored as CSV so that we can um, import this data into R and start working with it. So, we are going to try all the descriptive analytical tools uh, that we learnt uh, while dealing with uh, conductivity in looking at this uh, um, grain size data for both the sets. It is always a good idea to just plot the data to have an idea of what the data looks like. Of course, you can open in LibreOffice and inspect, but that is still very cursory and you can try to get an overall picture of the data just by uh, trying to uh, plot this data. So, we are going to do that also and uh, we are going to mostly use ASTM grain size uh, for our exercises. So, any of the uh, measure of grain size can be used, but we are going to stick to ASTM grain size uh, for this uh, uh, for this session, okay. So, let us go. Uh, the, for the data set 1, let us uh, do this uh, rank based reports. We have learnt about several rank based reports, scatter plot, stem and leaf plot, dot chart, cumulative distribution, histogram plot and box and whisker plot. So, we are going to do all these rank based reports and for the data set 1, we are also going to do the property based reports. Those are mean, median, standard deviation, variance and quantile. And uh, of course, finally, we are going to plot the data and we are going to uh, indicate these uh, property based values on the plot to have a better understanding of the data. So, that is what we are going to do in this session. So, for data set 1 and we will come back to data set 2 in the next one, okay. So, as usual to do the data analysis, we have to open R and we have to look at the R version, it is 3.6.1 action of the toes and we have to find out uh, uh, which directory we are that is by using get working directory. So, we are in the dealing with materials data directory. So, we are going to um, uh, load the data and uh, so to load the data we need to know which are the data files. So, let us just look at the uh, files in the data directory 
so if I say data, so there are all these uh, files and we are interested in grain size data set uh, 1.csv and 2.csv. So first we are going to deal with uh, grain size data set 1.csv. Uh, so let us do that. So let us load the data into the variable x and importing is done by using read csv because it is a csv file and uh, we are going to say from the data directory and uh, it is uh, grain size data set 1 dot csv. Uh, so let us read it. Okay. So as you can see immediately R tells you that there are 485 observations and 5 variables uh, which we have already opened in LibreOffice and saw. So let us get some more information on uh, the x. So it is a data frame, it has 485 observations and 5 variables and those 5 variables are listed here, integer identifying grain, number of measurement points in the grain, area of grain in square microns, diameter of grain in microns and the STM grain size. And you can see that integer is for example int, it goes as 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And the number of measurement points is 3, 7, 69, 130, etc. Area of grain has some 321 levels 0 0.0624, 0 0.01935, etc. And diameter of the grain again is a number, it is 0 0.11, 1 1.75, etc. And as you can see 0 0.11 and 1.75, so number of measurement points is 3 and 769. Uh, so, so that is also um, sort of uh, consistent with uh, what one would expect and the ASTM grain size is given 23.7, 15.7 etc. Okay. So uh, the easiest thing to do is to just, um, you, you can uh, you know without opening even in LibreOffice, uh, so you can say head x for example. So it will give you the uh, first few lines, right? 5, 6 lines, so you can do. And you can also do the similar command tail uh, to look at the last few lines, right. So this is another way of taking a look at the data, but this is not the complete uh, data. So one of the easiest ways to get the complete data is to plot x. Uh, like I told you last time, when you say just plot x for a data frame, it makes a table of plots. So it takes each of these variables, there are 5 variables and it plots each against all the other variables. So 5 into 5 there are 25 boxes that you can see and so you see 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, so 20 plots are there. And our interest is with the ASTM grain size, uh, in fact we are interested in looking at the integer identifying grain and the uh, ASTM grain size. Okay? So that is what we are going to plot and, and see. So let us uh, do that. Um, so let us go and uh, look at, so, so this is how the, uh, the, the figure looks. So this is a slightly uh, bigger picture, so you can clearly see uh, what is there along the diagonals and how the data plot looks like, right. So the first thing that we want to do is to make a scatter plot, right. We want to say that okay, uh, integer identifying grain against the ASTM grain size. So let us just plot that quantity and see. When I plot that quantity, you see that there are lots of data points quite close to 0 here and lots of data points are somewhere about 37,000 or 38,000. Right? We know that there are 485 observations and all of them are clustered in two uh, places. And rest of it in the middle is empty. So this picture is really not very helpful for me to understand how the data looks. So I want to understand why and because everything is clustered around uh, the, the first variable near about 0 and near about uh, 30,000, uh, let us just look at what this uh, integer identifying grains looks like, right. So if you do that, of course you can see that the numbers initially start as 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, intuitively that makes sense and somewhere about 190 suddenly there is a jump to 37,640 right and that is why after 190 uh, you do not see anything before 37,600 and odd. Okay. So which means that uh, it is not meaningful plot like to plot data like this. So for the scatter plot let us try to remove this uh, gap in the figure and try to make a scatter plot. For doing that we have to use a library 
and that library is known as plot tricks. Okay. So, let us take these two commands and let us put it in our. So, library I am going to use the plot tricks library and the plot tricks library allows to uh, you to plot a gap plot. So, x1 and x5 that is what we are plotting the first column versus the fifth column, but there is a gap and the gap is uh, uh, I am telling that okay, the gap is between 230 and 37600. So, those data points will be left out and the gap axis is x because that is the x axis and uh, I want to leave out in x these uh, points and for the rest we are going to plot. right? So, if you do that of course, now the data is uh, uh, easier to visualize. But there is a difference, you know, uh, when we plotted, see the x was labeled 1000, uh, 0, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, etc. But when you do the gap plot, uh, the tick marks have disappeared. So, we have to get them back, right. So, we will do that. There is a way to get the tick marks, okay. Uh, there is also a way to get the um, other um, information, right? Uh, so, okay. So, so let's go back and do this. So, of course, you can get uh, um, the title. Uh, this is the um, so, so the, the 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 labels also says x little ones, y little ones, etc. So let's change. Let's say let's call this plot as uh, uh, grain size versus grain ID plot, and x la label should be grain ID, and y label should be uh, ASTM grain size, right? Let us do that. So, we have grain size versus grain ID plot, ASTM grain size versus grain ID. So, that is what is uh, given and that is what uh, this command is and you can see, right, grain ID versus, okay. So, now let us also introduce uh, the X tick marks, okay. So, I am going to cut paste this command, okay. So, let us look at this command again it says this gap plot uh, 1 which is the first column ID, ID grain ID 5 which is the fifth column which is the ASTM grain size and we are plotting and it is a gap plot. So, we are saying that there is a gap in x axis and the gap is from 230 to 37600 and uh, so the, the plot is called grain ID and uh, uh, ASTM grain size plot the x label is grain ID y label is ASTM grain size and then we are saying introduce the x tick marks and the tick mark should go from 0, 100, 200 that is this part and then 37,600 onwards up to 38,400 because we can see that the data is up to 38,314. So, 38,400 should about uh, cover the entire range. If we do that, of course, we have the complete data now uh, plotted and, and the figure looks very neat and uh, professional now. So, uh, you can save this figure, okay. So, let us do that. Uh, we have done it already. So, um, we will do once more. This is uh, very common. Um, so, we want to save it as a PDF in the figures directory. We want to call this as grain size scatter plot dot PDF, and that is what the, the name of this uh, uh, file be. And we are just going to give the plotting commands and device off to tell or to close this PDF file and come back to showing figures to you on the screen, right. So, we do and uh, there is a plot that is generated. So, we can go to the figures directory um, and see that there is a uh, file that is uh, generated. This is a grain size scatter plot uh, dot PDF. Um, so, you can look at the properties and you can see that it is uh, just generated now, okay. So, this is the plot that is generated grain ID versus ASTM grain size, okay. So, um, 
what is the next step? Um, stem and leaf plot and dot chart and other measures. So, we will do that uh, next.